Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mellow Math Teacher, here for part two of Let's Play Mario Golf. Last time, I introduced you guys to the game here we go. by having Plum playing on the driving range in training mode. This time, we're tr finally going to put Plum in an actual tournament. We are going to compete in the Toad Tournament, the first tournament of the game, in which we will explore Toad Highlands in all of its glory. Here we go. Here is the first hole. Every hole pans around the entire thing at the start. And then we surround the hole. So, we can see that our opening shot is 12 yards down from our tee box. We have an 18 mile an hour tailwind that is going slightly to the left. So we should aim slightly to the right. We also have a tree off to the left that we should be mindful of, but if we go far enough to the right that shouldn't be much of a concern. We are 134 yards away. Let's zoom in and see what we're dealing with. The green looks pretty flat, although it does go downhill toward the back, so we might want to stay on the uphill portion and not go too far, otherwise we might have a pretty difficult putt. We have an 18 mile an hour tailwind blowing us from back to front, so we might want to club down a bit and go with a bit less power definitely want to land on the higher portion of the green rather than the lower portion, because putting with elevation is definitely kind of tricky. Ooh! Didn't expect that. If you strike the pin, a monkey pops out and that's a pin shot, as you just saw. So here we are, putting. It looks like a totally straight shot, about seven and a half feet away. You can press the R button to look at it from the cup's point of view, and use the C buttons to zoom in and out, forward and backward, and C right to go up and C left to go down. You can see that there's no elevation change at all, it's just a straight shot at seven and a half feet. While putting, you can use a short, middle, or long option that shoots a maximum of 30 feet, 100 feet, and 200 feet respectively. Seven and a half is about one quarter of 30 feet. It's generally a good idea to shoot farther than the stated distance, just in case you, and if you go the exact distance and undershoot it a little bit, you might just pop up short but if you travel a little extra distance, you'll fall into a hole without cupping over it as long as you don't hit it too hard. This is the leaderboard. We've got 29 other competitors playing in this golf tournament. Our objective is to be at the top of the leaderboard by the end of the tournament. The score represents how many strokes above par or below par you are. The idea of golf is to sink the ball in as few strokes as possible. Do not hit the ball too many times, is basically it. The hole tells us what hole that player has most recently completed. So Michelle, Colin, and Fly Guy all have scores of negative four and they are ahead of me, but they have played through more holes than I have, so they've scored more opportunities to get birdies than me. So they may not necessarily be doing better than me. Here we are at the second hole. It's a pretty wide open hole. Huge green, but it's pretty flat and there's no real obstacles heading toward the pin. We do have a strong tailwind again though. Not only do we have a strong tailwind, but we are hitting 11 yards downhill. 
which allows us to add a little extra distance to what we've got. If we hit downhill, the ball will go farther than we expect. And if we hit uphill, the ball will not go as far as we expect. So let's club down and reduce the power somewhat. Here we land on the front of the green and then the wind will blow us in the general direction of the hole. So this should work well. Beautiful. Nice on. Very nice. An 8.3 foot putt. If we click on R, we can see that the the uh, green is shifting from left to right from this perspective, which would be right to left from Plum's perspective. So we should aim slightly to the right in order to account for that slope. Sometimes that slope isn't easy to see while in this view, so always rely on the cup view in order to truly see the lay of the green. I'm going to go between the first and second dots. First dot is seven and a half, second dot is 15. One quarter and one half of 30 feet. I want to hit it about 10 or 11 feet to make sure I cover the distance plus a little bit extra just in case. And there we go. Golf is a great game for players who like to sit, think, and analyze what's going on in front of them without time pressure. It's a very relaxing game for the people who want to play casually, and a very rewarding game for people who like to study the game really closely to try to figure out how to optimize their play. We have a three mile an hour headwind. So, it's not much, but our ball won't quite go as far as we expect as a result. However, we are hitting 34 yards downhill. Which means that we are probably going to hit quite a bit further than 208 yards despite the headwind. Yep, there's 212. Let's see here. 128. It's two yards uphill. I'm on a 94.98, which means it won't quite go as far as I want. I don't think I'll quite reach the pin this way. Just due to the headwind and the uphill climb, so I'm gonna club up one. To the five iron instead of the six iron and reduce the power of my swing just a little bit to try to lay it on the green nicely. Bit of a trickier approach than we're used to. Very nice. Nice on! This game is really satisfying to get good at. Let's see, a little bit left to right from this perspective. Not much, just a tiny little bit. The elevation doesn't change much, so it's about 10 feet. I'll go a little over 10 feet. Which will put it right, well, it's around 15. Nice, but overhitting it is definitely much yes. better than underhitting it. We've got three birdies in a row, so we're doing great so far. We're two strokes away from the lead. Ah, rain. It is now raining. So this is a par 5 course, our first one. It's a long way up there, 449 yards from here to there. So our first drive is actually going to go less than halfway there, which means we're going to start here, and then hit our second shot somewhere around here, and then make our approach up to the green up here. We've also got a very strong headwind and rain to contend with, so this is some really nasty weather. Alright, due to the rain and the headwind going sideways and in front of us, we'll aim over here. 
I'd be surprised if this reaches 200. Well, we might reach 200. Also, note the number 6 underneath the word power on the left side of the screen. We only have 6 power shots available to us, so we should save them for when we really need it, for situations like this. Now we have 5 power shots. Yep, not even close to 200. We're on the fairway. 278 yards to go, still way out of our reach, so let's aim for the fairway over here on the right. A 1 wood will bring us down to 87.91, so let's not do that. Let's keep it to the 3 wood. I don't want to use another power shot because we may very well need them in later courses, and I think... If I were to hit it, say, 156 or so, I'd still have a decent approach to the green from that spot. So let's go with the three wood. Let's see, 140 yards. I think I hit my 3 wood about 140 right there, so I may have to use a similarly powered club. Although it was 94-98. But then again, I was at a similar elevation. Now I'm hitting the same distance 11 yards up. So I think I'm going to need to really power this, really put some power into this one to get up there. Another thing I'm going to do... You notice the blue ticks around the red dot and the golf ball on the right? I am holding the Z button to adjust where on the ball I am actually going to hit it. See, I'm kind of spinning around right now. Because the ball is uphill, I'm going to give the ball a bit more height by holding down on the control stick as I shoot the ball. Now this does affect the height of the ball. You can see how the green, no not the green, the white lines that are shooting forward, when I hold it down, you can see that they point slightly more up than they were before. You can see the difference, and I can also point them down, up, down, up. I'm going to shoot the ball higher, but since the ball is higher, it will be in the air longer, which means that the 21 mile an hour headwind is going to influence that path for longer, which means it will actually be even stronger. So we're really going to have to put a lot of power in this one. I don't know if it'll reach. I hope it does. Well, we've reached the green. Nice on! Let's see, we're 27 feet away. That's just barely in range of the short putt. However, you should remember that rain, wet grass, causes the ball to not roll as far as it normally would. So if I do a maximum distance short putt, it's not going to reach. Not even close. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to switch over to middle. And whenever I'm dealing with rain, I intend to multiply the distance I have to go by around 1.5. So that's 28. So I add half of 28, which is 14. Add that to 28 and I get about 42. So I should be just a couple ticks before the second dot of the middle putt. It's also tilting from left to right, so I'm going to go to the left. We can see that it's tilting toward the hole now. Let's go ahead and aim it properly. Let's see if it does it. Bam! Very nice. I apologize for your eardrums. This is a fairly short hole. There's quite a bit of elevation changes on the fairway here on the left side that we need to be careful of. We've got an 11 mile an hour tailwind. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down on the control stick again to shoot the ball higher which means, since the ball is higher, it will be affected by the wind for longer, which will make it go farther. Let's 
let's see, 116 yards. Will an 11 hour, mile an hour wind take us an extra seven yards? I'm not sure that it will. It might. I'll give it a little extra loft. I'll see if that gets us all the way there. Uh, I might have underhit it a little. Yes, I underhit it. Dang. So, this is the time to introduce you to the approach shot. If you are not on the green, but your distance from the hole is less than 60 yards, you can press B, and instead of a power shot, you have an approach shot. No matter what club you choose, the distance of the approach shot is 60 yards. But the two numbers on the right do still change depending on which club you use. Using a wood in the rough is not a good idea. We can use a iron instead. And since the rest is 14 yards, I'm gonna aim a little high and then try to point it at the hole. That looks decently good. Point it at the hole and then aim a little more than a quarter of the way there. Oh jeez. The problem with hitting it short is that you decrease your elevation based on that. So I ended up hitting the ridge of the green so it didn't go as far as I wanted. Let's see here. It's a 26 foot putt and it's uphill. Left to right? I'm not sure if I'm quite gonna reach that hole if I go full power. I'm going up almost an entire foot in elevation. I could figure out exactly using trigonometry, but I'm not gonna use trigonometry right now. That's a little too tryhard. Let's see here. I'm gonna hit it about 30, 35 ish feet on middle which would be a couple tick marks past the first dot. Might be a little too much. Yep, that was too much. Dang. Now it's a one foot putt. This is an easy tap in. Bogey. Oh. I hit five strokes on a par four. So I was one over par. Going over par is called a bogey. So now at minus, instead of minus four, I'm at minus three. I have increased my score. I am not as far under par as I was before. All right, let's do one more hole for this part. This is a par three, so it's a short hole. There's no obstacles between me and the hole, but it is a fair way down. And I've got a wind blowing sideways pretty strongly, so I'm going to aim over here and aim short of the hole because of the downhill. I think this should be good. Beautiful. Nice on! This green is a bit bumpy, so I'm going to need to move sideways a bit to account for that. Let's sink this. Nice. Very nice. Yes. Alright, we got five birdies and a bogey. We're currently sitting at fourth place in the standings. You can also head over to the scorecard to see kind of what a more traditional golfer would see. You have 18 holes to a course. The par, which is the expected number of strokes you take, is immediately underneath each hole. Every hole is par 3, par 4, or par 5 in this game. Right. Uh, I think that should just about do it. I went through these first six holes at a rather slow pace and was pretty explanatory in what was going on. But once you familiarize yourself with the basics and see more of how the golf works and understand it better, we'll be able to go through the courses at a more rapid pace. I just wanted to make sure that I had a 
pretty solid and thorough introduction as to how most of the game mechanics work. There's still a few things that we haven't gone through, but based on what we've seen today, you should be able to follow along decently well with my reasoning as to how I approach these later courses. Thank you guys very much for watching this second part of Mario Golf. We will continue the Toad Tournament next time. Do your reading, do your homework, ask your instructor questions, and go to office hours. See you guys.